Thank you. Morning, guys. My name is uh, Jorgen Arnesen. I'm uh, from Opera. I'm responsible for the mobile business uh, at, uh, at the Opera Group and also the, the Web3 projects that, uh, that we have kicked off uh, uh, over the last few years. So I'll give a little bit of, uh, of background of who we are uh, and what we're up to in, in the Web3 space. First of all, thank you for, for having the opportunity to, uh, to present. So a quick, uh, quick update on, on, uh, on Opera. So for those of you who don't know, we're, we're a browser company. At heart, we uh, were founded back in the 90s in Oslo, Norway. We've been doing uh, web browsing and web development for the last 25 years, actually, uh, all the way from the Web 1 area uh, to, uh, to where we are today. We were powering the first feature phones in Africa, for example, uh, via our Opera Mini uh, product to uh, a full-fledged Android uh, products that we have in our portfolio today. We have a pretty large uh, user base, 350 million users cross-platform, mobile and, and PC devices, ranging from users in Indonesia to, to the US, to uh, uh, Cape Town to, to Oslo. So we have a global perspective uh, on, uh, uh, on our business. Uh, being a browser company, we've uh, uh, always focused on, on, on key user, user values and features that, that are relevant in the browser context. Uh, we have built in and pioneered a lot of, a lot of uh, 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 relevant uh, features, ad blocking, uh, private mob, VPN, built into, uh, natively into the product that are, we think, particularly relevant for, for, uh, for Web3 uh, uh, evolution. Uh, we built our first uh, non-custodial wallet back in 2018, actually, on our Android products and some of our PC products. So we do have a, an existing tech stack that we're building upon now. And I'll come back to show you a bit more in detail what, uh, what, we, have, uh, uh, what we have in the cooking for, uh, for Web3. Um, on the Web2 side, uh, we have also uh, spun out of the browser business and, and developed over the last few years. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, content uh, aggregation products uh, that uh, we are also utilizing in our, our browser context, browser portfolio, uh, using AI uh, technology to, to surface content to the user. Also, again, relevant in the, in the Web3 space. Uh, we have a pretty strong core business, which is important for our development, uh, as, uh, as we are still, let's say, in investment mode when it comes to our Web3 project versus our, our, our core business. This is important for us when we, uh, when we continue to, uh, to innovate. In terms of the organization, we are approximately 750 people uh, in Opera, a global company. We're headquartered in Oslo, but have hubs, development hubs in Sweden, two offices in Sweden with 40, 50 people. We have an office in, in uh, two offices in Poland with a couple of hundred people. We have a development office also in Beijing, in China, so we are literally international, plus we have, of course, uh, remote uh, colleagues uh, from Brazil to, to Africa to India. Uh, diverse and, and, and global organization. This is just a snapshot of, of uh, the, the Web2 uh, mobile portfolio. We have an Opera Mini client for uh, the emerging markets, low-end, mid to low-end Androids. Uh, we have an a, uh, uh, Android product for, for mid to high-end or a Western market full-fledged uh, uh, product, and then we have also the browser for, for iOS. On the PC side, we have our generic PC product, which has been in the market for literally for decades. And recently, over the last few years, we started to build niche browsers on top of the generic tech stack. One great example is, is the GX browser that we uh, tailored, particularly for the gaming community, and launched this a couple of years ago with great success, and really identifying some, some core user uh, user values and, 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 and user needs uh, among that community. And some of that inspiration, some of that success, we are now bringing into the Web3 space. So you can ask yourselves, like, why, why do, do, do people, why do users choose Opera? We're not part of a large ecosystem. We don't get preloaded uh, default on Android devices and, and iOS devices. The only way that, that Opera uh, can exist and have existed for the last couple of decades is because we innovate. It's the only way, the only reason. The examples you see on, on, on the slide here uh, of these features are actually stuff that Opera pioneered and brought to the market. Uh, and many of these are, of course, today 
uh, de facto standard uh, features that you take for granted in, in a Chrome browser or a Firefox browser. I can name a few examples. Uh, the speed dials or the quick links that you, that you use, Opera pioneered that. Have the browsing, for example, data savings in Opera Mini, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we take that, that pioneer, pioneering spirit into Web3. It's the only way that, that, uh, uh, that we have a, have a future. So with that in mind, we started to look at uh, some of the key observations and trends from, from our lens, uh, our point of view. Uh, these are examples here, of course, non-conclusive, non but they are relevant from a browser context and how we uh, have a role to play in, in uh, solving some of these challenges and trends that we see. So we do see, of course, that there are some fundamental uh, user experience challenges. It, it's not often smooth to interact with, uh, with the apps. It's not always easy to, to uh, to, to interact cross-chain, uh, as an example. Stuff like this is, is, is where Opera has a role to play. We think perhaps that, uh, that uh, the, the web browser or the browser is perhaps more relevant in a Web3 context than in a Web2 context, just because of the decentralization, uh, let's say, uh, concept. Yes? Uh, yes, we do have that for for some of the some of the products. Also, the question, excuse me, the question was uh, if we have support for unstoppable domains. Um, so, uh, and then what we also see is that a big uh, a big uh, let's say barrier to to uh, onboarding into Web three is also around content and how content is organized and brought to the user. And from what I mentioned initially on on on, on the intro slide is that we. We come from, uh, from, from uh, a, uh, an experience in, in Web2 where we have brought content products to, to the users. And we are taking that, that, uh, that knowledge, that expertise around AI. We will bring that into a Web3 uh, context. So in, like, in short, how we see it a little bit is that the Web3 space is lacking a, a let's say, Web3 super app or power app that, that addresses Web3 compatibility problems. Uh, uh, smooth onboarding to uh, uh, through non-custodial wallets and a rich content experience. And this is basically what we, we want to build, and we started to build uh, 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 around uh, these these uh, pillars back in uh, Q3, uh, Q2, Q3 last year. Uh, this is just a snapshot of, of uh, uh, the products we have now live on on uh, on, on Mac, Windows, and, and Android. I'll come back to show you a little bit more how it's looked like. But in essence, what we are trying to, to, to do here is basically to build a, uh, the best non-custodial Web3 super app that addresses some core user values uh, and bring substance to, to the market. The user values that we focus on when we develop our products is around accessibility. We know that, that uh, users, uh, because of our, our global footprint, the users in, in Indonesia need to to have a great experience, just like a user in, in, in the US on, 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 on a different set of devices. So we have that global perspective from an accessibility point of view. We also have a large uh, existing user base on Web2 web today, 350 million users that we, of course, uh, are very keen and motivated to upgrade into a Web3 uh, uh, context. Ease of use is, is absolutely fundamental. We need to make sure that, that it is as smooth and easy as possible for, for, for users to, to interact. Uh, and this is why, as I mentioned, we need to have Web3 compatibility across, uh, across our, our products. On the transparency side, uh, also, also key, we think, uh, we, we do plan to open source our wallet. Uh, we will keep the wallet non-custodial. Uh, and on the privacy and security side, we also have an active roadmap on, on, uh, on uh, important aspects that we will bring. So this is a snapshot on, on how actually the, the, uh, the products look today. You can check it out on, on opera.com, uh, uh, the Web3 section there. But basically, uh, we, uh, we announced publicly in uh, January uh, our, our beta Web3 uh, uh, browsers. Uh, we have it available on Android and PC versions today. iOS is coming now uh, during March. Uh, these uh, these products are are built on on uh, on uh, three main components: Web3 compatible browser, 
We know it's not easy to, to, to build, uh, build good browsers. This is what we've been doing for, for the last couple of decades. This is, this is absolutely central to, to the onboarding. And then we have the non-custodial wallet that is natively uh, built in uh, into the products and this content uh, engine, which we have coined around a, 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 let's say, product name called Crypto Corner. And here we will bring in uh, 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 services uh, from, uh, from partners in, in the market. Uh, we do have an active pipeline uh, on, uh, in the roadmap now. We have a multi-chain strategy. Uh, we are integrating with Solana. Polygon is coming out, I think, actually today in, in our beta, beta product. Uh, we are porting uh, Bitcoin over from, from some of our, our Android products into this new Web3 uh, dedicated uh, uh, product, uh, uh, products we have. Uh, Probably in March, I hope we will announce a, a layer two solution, which of course addressing fundamental problems on, on, on gas fees. Uh, we are integrating with, uh, with Cello, et cetera, et cetera. So basically we, we see it as absolute necessity for us to, to, to have this multi-chain uh, multi uh, strategy in place. So probably by Q2 uh, next quarter, we will have a, a, a I would say, uh, good enough uh, coverage when it comes to, to relevant chains. Again, going back to the, to the user values I, I discussed earlier. Again, just showing a quick snapshot on, on, the, on the user experience in case you haven't tested our product uh, uh, yourself yet, but super easy onboarding for, uh, uh, to activate your wallet, non-custodial wallet, and we give you a nice, uh, nice UI, u nice uh, interface to, to, to check your your balance as an example. We integrate with coin market cap to fetch data to display that in, uh, to the user in a, in a nice way. We've integrated with one inch, uh, swaps, uh, swaps partner, uh, built into the product now is live. Uh, again, drawing a bit from our experience on, on, uh, uh, on the content side, we see also from our experience, the uh, wallet, the web three applications in the market today are not necessarily the best at surfacing information and bringing information to the user in an intuitive way. We have built our own push notification system, for example, that we will plug in so that when there are, for example, uh, material market movements, we bring that to the user uh, uh, in, in an intuitive way. Uh, so more of that will, will, will come. We think it's important for engagement, in, in, important for, for information uh, to the user. We are going to, to, to integrate with, uh, with Wallet Connect of course, as, a, as an important bridge into, into, the, into the, let's say, mass uh, volume of, uh, of the apps. And I wanted to mention this also because it's a little bit, not necessarily on the side, but it, it, it reflects our emerging market uh, uh, business as well. We have a large user base in, in, in Africa, as an example, more than 100 million users, uh, Opera users, connect to, to, to our products in Africa on a monthly basis. In Africa, it is difficult to download applications because of the constraints on the, on the devices. So uh, we use the existing uh, uh, install browser base, the Opera browser base, to surface web, web, uh, uh, websites and content to the user. We have done this for many, many years. We do it with partners. We do it with our own services. Last year, we launched a couple of football assets uh, under the name of Apex Football. And in a couple of months, we got 10 million users just from promoting that through our own inventory. And now soon we will launch our own opera crypto.com domain. We haven't announced the, the official name yet. That's why it's in, uh, in brackets. But uh, this is also part of our mission to bring content, bring information about Web3 and crypto to, to the masses and to the users. And lastly, I wanted to, uh, to, to, uh, to end on, on this note. We are also having a privacy and security uh, uh, front and center in, in our roadmap. I, didn't, I don't want to go into too much detail here, but I have some examples on, on stuff that we already have in our products and, and stuff that we will bring into our products as well. We do see and acknowledge that, that privacy and security is, is, is uh, uh, not only a, a problem, but a imp very important part of, uh, of uh, uh, Web3's uh, uh, ability to, to really get mass adoption. Uh, so with that, guys, I want to, uh, to wrap up. I say thank you. Any questions? Yes. WebAssembly. 
Uh, actually, not uh, sure I understand the question. I'm, uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm not a developer. Uh, okay. Okay, I, I think we have to take it offline. Um, sorry about that. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. And uh, up next, we 